right, secondary controls. So this is the third and final video of our 2022 nitrate walkthrough. Thanks for making it this far. In the first video, we looked at nitrates film emulations, and in the second one, we explored our grain controls. Now this video is a very quick look at nitrate secondary color controls. So we've included some controls to take your footage further and build more of a stylized grade. You might be familiar with them as they're also natively available in major editing platforms, but just as nitrates emulation controls are attuned to your camera, so too are these ones. So they deliver a more of a graceful, raw-like kind of a result. So we have our color wheels, which you can use to add color to highlights, mid-tones, shadows, as well as sliders for altering the brightness of them. There's also a saturation control, which I tend to use quite a lot in my own work. And there's uh, adjustment curves. There's a Luma curve and ones for the RGB channels. So you can remap the black and white points of your image. And lastly, there's a levels control where you're controlling your tonal midpoint highlights shadows. Um, each of these tools are very similar, so I would recommend just finding one that you're most comfortable with and playing around with it. If you aren't familiar with them, a good film stock to play where I'm with is the Polaroid one. It delivers such an unrealistic kind of image, you can really see how it responds when you play around with the color. So for instance, if I push the blue into the mid-tones, it takes out the red. So I'm going to play around with the footage of Weichu. I'm going to use the curves to adjust the contrast of this scene. Shooting in monochrome is kind of an exercise in contrast, and I'm going to push the shadows right down and the highlights up a bit. What I like about these controls is how graceful they are. They're working with the exposure curve of the camera. With the shot of Hennessy, it's decent enough, but I'm going to push the saturation control up a bit. Analog film colors tend to be a bit more muted compared with video. And so in my own work, I tend to increase the intensity just a little bit, a few notches. My own personal rule of thumb, which you don't have to follow, is to take up that saturation until I'm noticing it and then peel it back by around a third. So we took some footage, we applied some film emulation, then applied some grain, and then tweaked the grade slightly. You can see how just doing very little here goes a long way. And before and after shots featuring log footage don't really show you much, so I just want to show you how these shots sort of looked if we had applied a straightforward Rec 709 conversion to them compared with Film Convert. Now, this is the last feature I want to show you. Nitrate allows you to export your look as a lookup table or LUT, which you can then load onto a compatible camera or field monitor. Uh, this can be a lifesaver on a shoot. It helps you make decisions at the shoot based on how your footage will look in the grade. So well worth using, especially for those monochrome shots. It brings Film Convert into the camera itself. And so to export a lot, simply select a size. There's lots of sizes here, but you only need to export a 16 or 32 point look to monitor footage with. We export cube files. After you've selected the size of your LUT, if you're on Final Cut Pro, it'll save immediately to the desktop. Whereas with DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, you should be prompted to save your LUT. But I think we've reached the end of our 2022 Nitrate walkthrough. So I hope this gives you more of a fuller understanding of the controls and the potential it might have for your own projects. Uh, I'll be making more content this year, so please subscribe or comment below. I'm really keen to learn more about how you've been using Film Convert within your own workflow. I love seeing people's work and it's always, I'm, I'm always impressed with the, just the, the, the sheer creativity out there. So thanks for sticking around.